things. I mean, Chin Chow needs no introduction, but really is one of the most outspoken and interesting spokespersons on, um, on China and its economy. Despite having a PhD from Cambridge, he's unbelievably articulate on these issues. <laughs> uh, but, but please join me in welcoming Chin Chow. <laughs> Okay, uh, good morning everyone, uh, nice to be back, and uh, it's my pleasure to give you a very short speech about the uh, assets quality of China's Chinese bank. Uh, let me spend a couple of minutes to explain why I chose this topic or the background of this topic. First of all, it's uh, important and it's relevant. Uh, China Commercial Bank provides about 70% of total finance for Chinese economy. And the 16 A-share uh, banks, which is listed on, on A-share, and the 10 listed on A-share, uh, the, 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 the total uh, market cap takes about 50% of total market cap of the stock chain in, in China. Uh, certainly, uh, we experienced uh, about seven years consecutive declining of economic growth rate. Usually that will build up or create the MPL uh, in, the, in the bank. The problem of bank will may trigger, tri trigger the uh, systematic crisis for the whole national economy. So it's important and it's relevant. Secondly, uh, because the, the, the issue, I, I mean the estimation or assessment of this uh, asset quality in Chinese, on Chinese bank is widely spread in the market and in, even in some uh, policy makers. We have nominal one, official one, but we have some estimations. Uh, particularly after the uh, disclose of uh, IBM's close financial stability report, which uh, uh, made some studies on Chinese banks' quality to make uh, uh, the, the opinions, the assessment quite spread. So let me start one by one. Uh, the I, the Global uh, Financial Stability Report published in April last year, uh, MF estimated China's bank loan potentially at risk. That's the special concept or special word for IMF. It's not the BASA. BASA is, uh, would amount to 15.5% of total commercial lending. IMF's estimation has been widely quoted by those who care about China's uh, real NPL ratio, while the official NPL number was only 1.76%. So today, I will start with the explanation of methodology error of IMF's uh, calculation, followed by a review of public data on Chinese banks' non-performing assets. Then I will include special mention loan uh, into the scope of uh, potential NPLs. And on top of that, I will further consider the bad loans risk under China's shadow banking system. Then the market valuation approach will be used to calculate how investors uh, priced in the NPL in China. Uh, lastly, I will share my thoughts uh, on the trends of asset quality in China's uh, banking sector. Uh, according to uh, MF, debt at risk is defined as the debt of carpet with uh, interest coverage ratio below one. Uh, MF used this uh, method to measure the debt burden of a Chinese enterprise and quantified the loss of carpet loans in China banks. This is from 
borrower to lender. But the BASA is from lender itself. But it's a different approach. The estimation of China's carbon debt at risk ratio is 14.1%, and the loans potentially at risk reach to 15.5% of total commercial lending, assuming a loss of 60% on loans potentially at risk. MF believes Chinese banks' loan loss totaled uh, 750 billion US dollars or 7% of China's GDP. In China, there are two uh, public sources of banks' NPL ratio. The first one is uh, from China Banking Regulatory Commission, CBRC. The, the second one is a publicly disclosed financial statement of list banks. There are 16 a share and 10 a share. Now, let's look at the NPL ratio according to CBRC and on the third quarter of last year, the NPL ratio of commercial banking was 1.76%, while the ratio of Asia list commercial banking was 1.69%. Obviously, China's public data on NPL ratio varies significantly from IMF's estimation of 15.5%. Uh, The M is the logic error. However, we found several errors in IMF debt at risk method. First, the financial data MF adopted has been normalized. The profit from associates, a significant component of Chinese corporate profit has been excluded from EBITDA which results in a higher debt-at-risk ratio. Second, IMF's approach confused banks' loan with corporate debt. In fact, bank loans are just one of the comp components of corporate debt, and usually with collateral. Thirdly, banks' NPL ratio would increasingly deviate from a corporate debt at risk ratio since the bank has aggressively disposed their NPL of their balance sheet through write-off and transfer. When analyzing China banks' asset quality, I believe we should explain the scope, expand the scope of a problem loan by including special mansion loan. The first class is now more. Second cl class, tier one is now no more. Tier two is uh, special mansion. Then substandard doubtful loss. That's five. Great. So I add the uh, public announced the NPL. That's, that's last three categories. And, and I add the second one, special mansion loan, into that. From uh, uh, 2014 uh, till now, NPL plus SML ratio in commercial banks has been increasing quarter by quarter. In the third quarter of last year, the NPLs and SML accounting to 5.86 of the total loan. So it started from 1.76, now it's 5.86. China's shadow, banking, China's shadow banking activity has been actively active since five years ago, running, uh, ranging from uh, interbank transitions to wealth management products and other credit products. By re recording the products of balance sheet or classify them as uh, investment rather than uh, loans, the bank are able to report a higher capital adequacy ratio, set aside smaller provisions against the bad loans and avoid relative regulations. Based on the data of uh, list commercial bank, we estimated the 
total value of credit in shadow banking would amount to 15 trading RMB, including five trading risky wealth management products and 10 trading interbank receivables. Assume that the bad loans in shadow banking took up 10% to 20%. The amount of shadow banks NPL is RMB uh, 1.45 to 2.9 trillion. Uh, if at banks NPLs as official one, SMLs, special management loan, and shadow banking. Together, the maximum non-performing assets ratio in commercial banks could reach 6.141 to 7.91. That's about 6 to 8, that range. So let's look at the market price implied NPL ratio. We can leverage trading price to calculate the market implied NPL ratio. The logic here is that list banks are trading at discount to their book value, while their ROE are as high as 15%. So the, the key concern is access quality. When bank traded at a discount, it means that from an investor's perspective, bad loans would have consumed the bank's pre-provision operating profit and impaired part of the book value. So that is a formula uh, of that uh, implied NPL ratio. For A share listed banks, the trading PB uh, ratio is uh, 0 0.82 at below 1 at the end of last year. Then the calculated NPL ratio is 6.13%. Uh, With the same approach as share banks, trading PB ratio is 0 0.71 implied an NPL ratio of 7.32%. Let me put that in context of you. Asia investors had the price in NPL ratio of 6.13%, slightly higher than official NPL plus SML, special mansion loan. Asia investors uh, traded bank higher discount which implies an NPL ratio of 7.32%, close to the upper end of NPL plus special mansion loan plus shadow banking, uh, ranging from 6 to uh, 8, as we uh, previously calculated. The trend of banks' assets quality. With China's economic growth stabilized at about around 6.5, carpet profit improved, and the PPI coming up to positive. We discovered that NPL formation ratio has declined recently. Before write-off at back, the average NPL formation ratio for list the bank is estimated to be 28 PPs in third quarter of last year, increased by three PPs from a previous quarter, marginally uh, reduced. As the leading indicators of NPL, the formation ratio of special mansion loan and overdue loans in 2016 decreased sharply compared with the same period last year. Summary. I will briefly go over what I have mentioned today since a lot of uh, estimations, a lot of uh, figures have been provided. Uh, actually, the, the, 
I believe that the IMF exaggerated the problem of China's bad loans and its debt at risk method at around 15.5% loan loss ratio had misled the market. Then I start with the officially disclosed, a publicly disclosed NPL. Then add their special matching loan, then add their shadow banking by loans. Then reach to the figure or range from uh, six to eight percent. So in my opinion, the existing NPL would continue to be uh, exposed, but the incremental or increased pressure of NPLs had been reduced. With a stable external market, strengthened internal control, and bad loan disposal, the NPL ratio could converge to a market equilibrium that is relatively reasonable and acceptable. Thank you. We just have time for maybe one or two questions. I guess the summary is that if corporate earnings continue to improve, the, the, the um, NPLs will continue to decline, and it's, it, there's no systemic risk here. Is that a fair conclusion? Uh, yeah, let's start from last year. The corporate profit increase after several years decrease. So that's the turning point or marginally change. Right. Uh, but as far as uh, systematic crisis, I think it's still too far to discuss. I don't know if uh, on the way it's very close. I don't think that. That, that there is no, that is, uh, there is no systemic crisis. Pressure. Pressure that yeah. you'd have to look so far out that it, it, we can't plan that far anyhow. That's the conclusion. Yeah, but the, my, my feeling is that it is a problem there, but it, it's not that close to us. We still have big room or time to and deal with that. Why did corporate, after seven years of decline, why did corporate pro profits perk up in 2016? Uh, the government adopted uh, the uh, fiscal and, uh, and currency uh, policy tried to uh, help the market. Uh, I don't think that it works so effectively. Uh, it's, it, it has to, uh, to experience this whole process. But if you look at the market, you'll find actually the market can start to to, uh, to work uh, in terms of the uh, overcapacity issue, the, the housing bubble, the heavy debt, uh, the, mar the, the, the market, particularly for those uh, private sectors, they have, mar they have budget constraint, hard constraint, so they gradually uh, reduce their capacity, uh, deleveraging, and uh, the, the uh, inventory of the housing. So as, uh, after seven years, I think it's about time for, uh, for some, some uh, enterprises to, uh, to increase their profit. Lending to state-owned enterprises as a percentage of total debt increased in 2016, is that correct? When I say improving, I didn't mean the, 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 it's, it's from increase that to decrease that. I mean marginally the increase, the, the debt increase in a much slower, smaller pace. It's for economics, we focus on the marginal change. But I'm talking about it. SOE, loans to SOEs as a percentage of total debt increased in 2000. And 16 versus private. So SOE versus private loans, the percentage to SOEs increased. 
Is that right? Yeah. That, isn't that, isn't, that, that, isn't the, given SOE's performance, which is highly less profitable than private sector performance, isn't there a systemic risk in what's going on? Uh, yeah, that shows that we still uh, have uh, uh, the two uh, parts of the market, SOE or non-SOE, private sector. Uh, the, the ideal market is the uh, resources will flow horizontally, vertically, uh, but actually uh, they, they be divided into two parts, which makes the resources will flow to those low efficiency parts of the economy. That's the problem. Time for one very short question. Um, or if there are no questions, we'll go right on to the one question right here. Uh, you, use the microphone, please. Uh, a quick question for you is, uh, does CBRC has a stress testing uh, kind of planning out on the banking sector non-performing loans in the next future, maybe next year or five years? Because the U.S., we have C cars and stress testing for the major banks. Just wondering if uh, the you know, U.S. The, the, the CBRC do that every year. Uh, they, they do it uh, as a whole market in terms of the GDP growth. They do it at sec sectors by sectors, industry by industries, housing industry in particular. They did not announce or uh, uh, disclose the whole reserve, but they told us if the housing price drop 50%, it's still okay for them. So they trust it. Chin thank you so much.